Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We are resuming our series building a starter kit for single page applications. In today's video, we'll look at how we can deploy our Dart server over to AWS and run that as a service using Amazon's ECS offering. Let's get started. A couple of refactorings have been made to the project since the last video. So firstly, the project has now been converted to now safety. Thanks to Lewis. I've done some further tweaks and to take you through that briefly, I've updated our packages to these versions over here. I've cleaned up the code. So for instance, we are not using the verify JWT function anymore. It's a bit redundant. And instead we've got this logic over here. Our Redis server accepts a password. And after this password has been set, I run the dart build command, which has generated the updated configuration, including the password. And this password is being used in our token service. When we connect to our Redis server, we also send this object with our password. And then in our spa server, we are passing that in here. Also, our host has been replaced with this constant value, which saves us from having to hard code the host name itself. I've made an update to the Docker Compose file. I've added a configuration for MongoDB with a root username and password, and also added this one for Mongo Express, which gives a browser-based UI for accessing the MongoDB database configured here. So you can access localhost 8081 to use that. All these changes can be viewed on GitHub. To test that this works, I'm gonna cd into spa server and, and run the docker compose command. And then I'll run our dart server by pressing F5. While the server is running, let's try and access our database. Okay, so we registered our user. Let's try logging in. Okay, that gives us this token here. I'm able to use that to make a request to our users endpoint. Okay. And then for logging out, you can send that across. Oops, that's meant to be a post, my bad. I think the token expired. Try that again. Okay, successfully logged out. All right, so now we can move on to setting up our deployment. We need to set three things up. We need to do some work in AWS. Secondly, we need to set up our Redis online server. So that would be our production Redis server. And also we need to set up a cluster on MongoDB Atlas. Let's hop on over to AWS. And we're working with Amazon ECR. ECR essentially allows us to host our Docker images. So let me create a repository. We'll give it a name. We can enable scan on push and click on create. Okay, so at the moment, this repository is empty, which means that we'll have to build our image locally and then push it over here. But before we do that, let's log into Redis Cloud. Then I'll create a new database. I'll give it a name. I'll leave the protocol as such. I'll leave this password like so. So let me copy that and I'll go on ahead and activate it. After a few moments, we should get a green light, meaning that it's active. I can come back to our env file and I'll place the password here. And then I can copy this endpoint and place that over here. And our port needs to move from here over here. And remember to get rid of this colon. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go over and set up our MongoDB cluster over here under databases. And let's build a database. For now, we use shared, go create. I'll just leave the defaults as is and then create the cluster. And we need to set a username and password. I'll just call this dart sba user and just generate a password. And let me copy this password in a text file so I can use it later on. I'll click finish and close, go to database. And after a couple of moments, our cluster should be set up and ready for connections. 
All right, I'll click on connection and then I'll connect with compass, which should give us the connection string that we need. So this one over here, I'll copy that. I'll place that in here and I'll replace the username and the password. Okay, I'll stop the running Dart server and then I'll regenerate our env config file over here. That's good. Now let's run this again. Press an F5. Okay, I think I made a mistake. Hold up. Let me stop that. I think I need this connection string instead. So let me copy this bit. Then let's use that instead. Let me run the build again. Okay, it's not updating. Find that sometimes it doesn't update. Let me do this instead. And then let's try run this again. Okay, so that worked. All right, so we've got our Mongo database set up. We've got our Redis data store. Let's run this again. Press F5. Ah, wait, reason why this is happening is due to how we are creating our database objects. So because we are connecting to MongoDB with SSL enabled, we need to do this instead, db.create. And then let's try this again. All right, this looks good. I'll come back to Postman. Let's attempt to log in. Okay, incorrect username password because it doesn't exist. So let's create our user. Okay, let's log in. That's good. Let's retrieve our users. Okay, cool. So we are connected to our cluster on MongoDB Atlas and also we are connected to Redis Labs. Next, what we're going to do is to build our project as a Docker image and then we push that to AWS's container repository. I'll stop the server and under SPA server, I'll create a Docker file. And in here, I'll paste the following instructions. And what's happening here is we're pulling from the Dart stable image. We're doing an update. We're copying over the pubspec.yaml file to our working directory. We are updating our packages and then we copy everything else. And then we do a Dart pub get again, which I believe is related to resolving symbolic links or something like that. There is a Medium article on it from the Dart team. I'm creating the ALT binary from our sparserver.dart file, and this is the output. And because we want our image sizes to be as small as possible, we are pulling the Alpine image. So this is a good alternative to Docker's Scratch image, which unfortunately AWS doesn't support. We are copying over our ALT binary, as well as the public directory which is over here. So from this image, we are exposing port 8080 and then we run our binary. Okay, so let me save that. I'll also add a docker ignore file and then we'll ignore the following. All right, so now we are going to build and deploy our docker file. The first step is to build our docker image. We'll do that by running the following command and this is the name of our image and this period is the current directory, which is spa server, because we cd'd into that earlier. Once that is finished, we need to log in to ECR by running the following command. Make sure that you got the right region and the right account ID. So I'll run that. And yeah, we should say login succeeded. Next, we need to tag the Docker image that we built like so, and then we'll push our tagged image we can take a look. Okay, so there we go. Our image is now here. And so far, there's only one vulnerability, uh, but it's a low one. Clicking here will show you the details. And there's a link to this page, which gives more information about the vulnerability and how you should be able to fix it. But I'm not going to look into that here. And one low is not too bad. To be able to run, this image as a container, we need to use ECS, which is Elastic Container Service, to create a service, and then we would point this service to this latest image, which should spin it up for us. So let's do that. I'm gonna come over here to ECS, click on clusters. I'll create a cluster, which is required because we'll be creating a service later on. I'll leave the default selection to network only because we'll be working with Fargate and uh, let's give it a name 
I'll create a new VPC, which is a virtual private cloud. This will allow us to essentially run our service in a in an isolated virtual network. Um, if you like, you can enable container insights for our use case. I don't care so much, so I'll, I'll go ahead and create it. After a couple of moments, it should be ready. All right, and we are done. And also over here, we have a list of the resources that have been created. So I'll view the cluster. To get to running our Docker container, we need to create a task definition for that particular cluster. So we'll select Fargate and the name of our task definition, Dart SPA boilerplate. The task role, ECS task execution role, operating system family, select Linux. The task memory, select 0.5 gigs. CPU, I'll just go with the lowest. And then we need to add our container to this particular task definition. And then the container name, dot SPA boilerplate, and the repository URL, we can find that by, by coming to our registry and then copying this URI. Paste it here and I need to specify the tag, which is latest. The port mappings will map to 8080, which is what we exposed in the Docker file. I'll just click add and then we will create. Okay, so we got our task definition. Let's view it. In order to make use of this task definition, we need to create a service. So under actions, I'll click create service. The launch type will be Fargate. We'll give it a service name. Number of tasks will be one. Click next step. Make sure that a correct VPC is selected. So we know it's this one. On the subnets, select all the options. On the security groups, we're gonna edit and we'll create a new security group. I'll give it a name. And under the inbound rules, the type will be custom TCP. The port range will be 8080. That's the port we are exposing from our running container. And the source, we leave that as anywhere, which means that our container allows traffic from anywhere. Okay, let's go. Further down, load balancer type, we'll leave it as none for now. Click next step. We'll configure our service auto scaling rules. So the minimum amount of tasks we want is one. The maximum amount, we'll just set it to two. We'll set a policy, which is essentially the criteria for increasing the amount of tasks. So in this example, we'll look at the CPU utilization. And if the CPU usage goes past 60%, then ECS behind the scenes would spin up another task. And we'll give this policy a name. We'll go next step, confirm we're happy with everything, and then we'll create the service. Okay, so we're done. We can view the service. We've got this task now running, which is because it was started by the service we've just created. And we go into this task, getting a notification that this has stopped. So let's see what's happening with this. Let's see the logs. So it stopped because we are getting this exception. This is from the container, it's returning that. All right, so did some further digging and came across this Stack Overflow post, which details the reason why we are getting the not found error. It appears to be related to a couple of libraries on Alpine Linux. I'll add a link to this in the description, but essentially we need to get a particular build for glibc. I copied this source code here and I've placed it over here in the code. And then I made some tweaks here as well. So I set the rec directory to slash app and I'm copying from app bin server to app slash server. So there's no more bin subdirectory. The public folder remains the same. And then over here, the command is forward slash app forward slash server. And I tested this locally, which works. So we can build this and then we can run it on port 8080. And when we go to Docker, we got our token service running connected to our database. Accessing locals 8080 gives us that. Okay, so let's do a deploy to AWS. I've actually copied the deploy instructions over here in this deploy script. So we are building the Docker image. We're logging into ECR. We are tagging our Docker image that we built and we're pushing that. And then we need to run this last command to essentially deploy a new service 
which will run our new image that we just pushed. So let me run this script. Okay, this looks good. We'll come back to ECR and we'll go to our repo and we've got the new image that's been pushed. We'll come to ECS and let's come to our cluster and we've got this new task running. Let's go into the task. Okay, that is good. It shows that it's running here. When we look at the logs, we've got our printed messages. So that is good. I'll come to details. We've got this public IP address that we can test with. So I'll copy that. And then over here, let's try and test with that. Okay, the user already exists. Let's attempt to log in. Okay, that looks good. We'll make a call to our users endpoint. Okay, so that is good. Let's attempt to log out using the same token. I think it expired. No worries, let's try again. So we logged in with that. We retrieve our user details and are we able to log out with it? Perfect. And let's try the refresh token scenario. Our login, use this token over here till it expires. And when the token expires, okay, so now it's expired, we can copy that here and then I'll copy this refresh token here and use it in the body. And that should give us the new self tokens. Okay, this looks good. So what have we achieved so far? We have built a Docker image from our Dart server-side project. We've created our online databases for Redis and MongoDB. So we've essentially mimicked a production scenario. Of course, there are various other ways you can improve this, such as having this running on an ALB. And depending on the response I get from this video, I might decide to do a follow-up connecting our service to an ALB. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed what was presented here, be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.